Okay. So, so can we start? Okay. Okay. It's our great pleasure to have a uh, Harold to speak uh, to speak on the uh, on openness of k-module space and the uh, disorganization of final varieties. We're sorry about the te technical problem. So we start, I think, uh, five minutes, uh, six minutes later. So we should end on uh, 12, uh, 12 or 6. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak. It's great to have the opportunity to talk after having enjoyed uh, many other talks in this seminar. Uh, so what I'll be talking about today is all joint work with Daniel Halpern Leisner, uh, Yu Chen Lu and Chen Yang Xu. Uh, so throughout, I'm going to work over the, or so before I begin, let me just make one comment. So I don't think I have given a Beamer talk since maybe undergrad. Um, so I hope I do not go too quickly through the slides, um, but I've posted the slides in the chat. So you should be able to access them. And if I scroll uh, through something too fast, please let me know, or you can look at it yourself. Okay. So throughout the talk, I'm going to work over the complex numbers. And the goal in this talk is to develop an algebraic approach to prove the properness of k-moduli spaces of Fano varieties. Uh, so we cannot prove this conjecture, but we reduce it to some statement about uh, unstable Fano varieties and uh, some result that we hope can be attacked using tools from irrational geometry, but is still quite subtle. So before I begin with uh, explaining the approach or even talking about Fano varieties, I want to build some intuition for proving properness of certain uh, moduli spaces. So instead of looking at moduli varieties, I want to look at uh, something that will provide us with better intuition, which is the moduli of vector bundles on a curve. Uh, so the goal is to try to parameterize vector bundles on a smooth projective curve and we should probably fix some invariants like the rank of the vector bundle and the degree of the vector bundle. And you could try to construct some moduli space and you immediately uh, encounter some issues. So first the moduli functor is not going to be bounded. Um, and also the moduli functor is very highly non-separated. Um, so you're not going to get some projective scheme parameterizing such objects. So the well-known solution to this problem is to parameterize semi-stable vector bundles. And this kind of originated uh, in terms of some GIT computations uh, by Mumford, but also these are kind of natural objects to look at in terms of the complex differential geometric structure. So the kobayashi hitchin correspondence says that these are kind of a natural class of vector bundles to look at uh, in terms of their complex structure. Um, so recall a vector bundle E on a, a smooth projective curve is semi-stable if for all uh, sub-bundles, the degree over the rank of the sub-bundle is going to be less than or equal to the degree over the rank of the original bundle. So the sub-bundle does not destabilize sta the original bundle. And we have this classical theorem due to Mumford and Sachadri that says there exists a projective scheme parameterizing S equivalence classes of semi-stable vector bundles on the curve of fixed rank and degree. So there are different ways to say what this S equivalence is. So you could say that this means that if you look at, or two vector bundles are S equivalent, if when you look at their Jordan holder filtrations, the associated gradients are isomorphic. But another way to say is that the two semi-stable vector bundles degenerate to a common semi-stable vector bundle. Okay, so now we can ask, how do you show that this moduli space is proper? Um, so there are two ways to do this. I guess one way is the original way is you can construct this moduli space as some projective GIT quotient. Um, and it's necessarily a projective scheme that way. Um, a second approach, which isn't really the approach done for uh, vector bundles on a curve, but was carried out in higher dimension dimensions is to show that the moduli functor satisfies the existence part of the valuative criterion for properness. Uh, so this was done in a paper of Langton, and you can read a more modern treatment of this in the work or in the book of Hoybricks and uh, Lent. So Langton's approach, or also known as Langton's algorithm, is we should uh, start with a DVR, R, and let's say capital K and uh, small k are the fraction field and residue field, 
and our input is a semi-stable vector bundle on uh, the curve cross with spec k. And we want to extend this to a family of semi-stable bun uh, vector bundles over the entire DVR. So to do this, the first step is to extend uh, this vector bundle uh, over uh, spec of the fraction field to a vector bundle over uh, the entire DVR, or C across the D spec of the DVR. Um, so it turns out this is quite easy to do, but the only problem is that this extension is very highly non-unique. And in general, uh, the special fiber of this extension is not going to be a semi-stable vector bundle. So LinkedIn's approach is if the special fiber is not semi-stable, then we can try to construct a new extension uh, so that the special fiber becomes less unstable. So I won't write exactly how to do this, um, but it's quite, uh, or the approach is quite simple. The idea is that if you have something where the central fiber is unstable, then it has and the central fiber has an optimal uh, destabilizing subbundle, and it's canonical. And what you do is you want to uh, create the new extension E2 so that uh, destabilizing subbundle is instead of, or you flip it from being a subbundle to a quotient bundle. Um, and the point is, this requires some work, is that after you repeat this process, repeating three, uh, this process terminates and eventually, and the special fiber is semi-stable. So you extended the vector bundle over C cross spec K to a family of semi-stable vector bundles. Okay, so let me uh, say what the key is to this argument. Uh, so the key is that an unstable vector bundle E on a curve has a canonical optimal destabilization, which we probably know, uh, all know as the hardenar simhan filtration of the vector bundle. Um, I should note that in Langton's argument, he really only uses the first term in the uh, filtration, but let's just uh, say the important part is we have this destabilization. And we can reinterpret this. Uh, if you're familiar with GIT, you'll know that you can use the Reese construction to take this filtration of E, and this gives you some G M equivariant vector bundle on the curve cross A1. So the way you do this is you look at some direct sum of the uh, filtered components of this. Um, and this new GM equivariant vector bundle on C cross A1 away from zero is just the original vector bundle you start with and over the special fiber is the associated graded bundle. Um, and a way to abstract this notion is you can think about this GM equivariant vector bundle as a map from A1 mod GM to the moduli stack of vector bundles that sends one to the vector bundle you're looking at. Okay, so using this, uh, the notion of uh, canonical destabilization um, has been abstracted uh, by various people uh, to more general stacks. And the notion that we'll be looking at today is called a theta stratification. So I'll define what this means later in the talk, but the work of Alper, Halper, and Leisner, and Heinloch uh, generalizes this uh, lengthens algorithm type argument to prove the properness of more general moduli problems, specifically Arden stacks emitting theta stratifications, which means that you can somehow stratify the unstable locus of your stack uh, in terms of how unstable the points are and in the unstable locus, every point has a canonical destabilization, which is some map from A1 mod GM to the stack, uh, such that one goes to that point. So I'll talk more about this later. Any questions? Okay. So now that I've talked about uh, vector bundles, I wanna move on to talking about moduli of varieties. So recall a smooth projective variety X is gonna be called canonically polarized if uh, the canonical bundle is ample, Calabi-Yau if the canonical bundle is numerically trivial, and Fano if uh, the, the anti-canonical bundle is ample. And the first and third cases are uh, helpful for looking at in moduli problems just because they have canonical polarizations. And it's nice to look at varieties with a polarization. 
Um, so it's well known that we have nice moduli spaces for canonically polarized varieties. Um, so you can look at uh, a curve of genus G greater than two so that the canonical bundle is ample. And I think we all know that there's this deline mumford uh, compactification of the moduli of uh, genus G curves uh, where you add in uh, stable curves on the boundary, which are gonna be curves that have at worst no real singularities, but still have a discrete automorphism group. And a theorem of Deline and Mumford says that there exists a projective theme parameterizing these objects. Um, and there exists higher dimensional, dimensional analogs uh, of these moduli spaces uh, using this stability notion uh, due to Kohler, Shepard, Barron, uh, where you look at uh, varieties where the canonical bundle is ample and you have some restrictions on the singularities. Specifically, uh, the variety should have uh, semi-log canonical singularities. Um, and the construction of a projective scheme parameterizing such objects relies on many hard results in birational geometry. But I won't talk about that today. So what I really wanna talk about today going to be <clears throat> the moduli of Fano varieties. Um, so in order to have compact moduli spaces of Fano varieties, I'm going to look at Fano varieties that have mild singularities. Um, so I'm going to call a projective variety X Q Fano if it has at worst KLT singularities, meaning X is normal, uh, uh, KX is Q Cartier, and then there's some additional uh, uh, condition on the relative canonical bundle on the log resolution of X. And minus, and uh, Q, I use the word Fano because I'm also assuming minus KX is ample. So these commonly come up in birational geometry in the minimal model program. So one can try to construct moduli spaces for Fano varieties the same way that one did uh, uh, using the kohler shepard barron approach, and you encounter some difficulties. So the first difficulty is that Fano varieties are in general going to have non-discrete automorphism groups. Uh, so the automorphism of Pn is clearly uh, PGLN plus one, which is non-discrete. Um, but even if you just look at P2 blowing up that point, you have uh, an automorphism group that is non-reductive. Um, so this makes the moduli stack much more complicated and constructing moduli spaces of such objects is also going to be uh, much more complicated as well, because you're not going to have a Deline Mumford stack and you can't just use, uh, or you can't uh, use the Kiel Mori theorem to construct the moduli space. So, another issue that you run into with Fano varieties is that uh, the degenerations of Fano varieties are not unique. So, if you have a family of Fano varieties over a punctured curve, there are many ways to fill in that Fano. The, oh, there are many ways to fill in that family over the puncture with a uh, family of, or with a new Fano variety. Um, and some examples of this are you can look at degenerations of P2. So you can construct a GM equivariant degeneration of P2 over the affine line, um, where away from zero, uh, the fibers are just P2, and over zero, you're just, you get P114. So the complex structure jumps. So if you try to parameterize all Fano varieties and uh, Q Fano varieties, then P2 is not going to be a closed point and your moduli space uh, is probably not going to be separated. And I should note that in dimension three, you can come up with similar examples uh, using the Mukai Umamura threefolds and you can construct degenerations uh, where all the fibers are actually going to be smooth uh, and not just where the special fibers Q Fano. So the solution to this problem is similar to the solution to the problem uh, for uh, vector bundles. Um, so you need some added stability condition, and it might also be helpful to take some inspiration from complex differential variety. So in, what you can do is you can parameterize Fano varieties emitting Keller-Einstein metrics, meaning uh, Keller metrics uh, satisfying uh, that the Ricci curvature of the one one or of the Kähler form is equal to the original Kähler form. So one thing to note about these Kähler-Einstein metrics is that when they exist on a Fano variety, uh, they're always going to be unique up to uh, the identity component of the automorphism group. 
but the complication is that such uh, killer Einstein metrics don't always exist. So let me mention the celebrated theorem of Chen, Donaldson, and Sun, and Tian, which says that a smooth final variety emits a, <clears throat> a killer Einstein metric if and only if it is k-polystable. So the point is on the left-hand side of the implication, we have some differential geometry condition killer Einstein metric. And on the right-hand side, we have some stability notion uh, that's going to be purely algebraic. So before I define what this is, let me just mention uh, some examples. Uh, so uh, the easiest example is PN, uh, which is k-polystable. And the Keller-Einstein metric is just the fubini studi metric. Um, in dimension two, you can look at Fano varieties, also known as Del Paso surfaces. And it's a theorem of TN that uh, X admits a Keller-Einstein metric or equivalently is k-polystable if and only if the automorphism group is reductive. So this means that uh, the blow-up of, of P2 at one point or two points uh, are, is not going to be uh, k-polystable. But all the remaining uh, Del Pazzo surfaces will be k-polystable. And then a third example is that general smooth Fano hypersurfaces are <clears throat> k-polystable. So you can first deduce that the <clears throat> that the Fermat hypersurfaces are admit killer einstein metrics. This was originally done by Tien. And then you can use that admitting a killer einstein metric is going to be an open condition in fa families uh, with discrete automorphism group. And this type of statement uh, was first proved by uh, <clears throat> Donaldson and also Odaka. Um, in general, it's quite difficult to determine when a given Fano variety admits a killer Einstein metric or is k-polystable. Um, and if you were at the talk on Tuesday, you would have heard some pretty exciting developments on this topic. Okay, so let me mention, uh, before I talk about what the definition of this uh, stability notion is, uh, there are two ways to approach this notion. So the first one is using uh, degenerations along the affine line. Um, and it is kind of inspired by the way you detect uh, stability using geometric invariant theory. So this type of definition was introduced by Tien in 1997 and reformulated by Donaldson uh, algebraically in 2002. Um, and more recently, there have been uh, approaches to detecting, to defining case stability using valuations. Um, so I think this was essentially first initiated uh, in the work of Buxom, Hisamoto, and Johnson, where they replaced the data of a test configuration with data about valuations. But this was uh, utilized in the work of uh, Kento Fujita and Chi Li, in which they proved a valuative criterion for case stability. And <clears throat> the key thing is we have these kind of two definitions. And the first definition using degenerations is closely related to moduli problems, since you're often looking at degenerations, while well, the second approach is closely related to birational geometry. So to understand moduli spaces of Fano varieties, it's going to be uh, really important to actually use both of these approaches, because we want to use the moduli aspects of the definition, but we also want to use tools from birational geometry. Um, so unfortunately, the definition is, can be a bit lengthy, and I'll have to talk about uh, both of these definitions for going forward. Any questions? Okay, so let me uh, define case stability using degenerations. So a special test configuration of X, which I'll just call a test configuration throughout this talk, is gonna be a GM equivariant family of q Fano varieties over the affine line with an isomorphism uh, between the fiber over one and X. So note that you can use the isomorphism between the fiber over one and X uh, and the GM action to show that there exists, uh, that this family away from zero is just isomorphic to the trivial family. And <clears throat> another thing to note, another thing to note <clears throat> about this definition is you can kind of reformulate uh, what a test configuration is of a Fano variety. So you can think about this as being a map from A1 mod GM 
to the moduli stack of final varieties such that uh, one gets sent or the fiber over or sent, sent such that one gets sent to the final variety X that you started with. So this framework will be helpful a little later on. So now associated to one of these degenerations or special test configurations, you can cook up some numerical invariance. So what you can do is you can look at the GM action on the special fiber and note that the um, GM acts on the anti-canonical bundle of the special fiber. Um, so then what you can do is you can look at the dimension of the spaces of global sections of minus MK of the special fiber, which I'll call capital N sub M. And then you can also look at the weight of <clears throat> the GM action on that uh, space of global sections and the top wedge power of that. Um, so these are two numbers that you get, and then you can look at how these grow in terms of N. So as M grows, the first number N sub M grows like a polynomial in terms of the dimension of the variety. And the second number grows also like a polynomial, but in that dimension plus one. So what you can do is you can look at the Laurent series expansion of the weight over M times the dimension of the space of global sections, and you can construct some invariant, or I guess Donaldson, uh, or this is what Donaldson did, and the Futaki invariant of this degeneration of this special test configuration is given by uh, minus two times uh, the coefficient of F1. Um, <clears throat> and then you can define K stability by saying, sorry about that, um, by saying that X is K semi-stable if this Futaki invariant is always non-negative and X is K polystable if it's K semi-stable and the only time when the Futaki invariant is zero is when this degeneration is the trivial family. But it might have a non-trivial GM action. Okay. So now that I've defined case stability using test configurations, I want to also discuss the evaluative approach. So a divisor E over X is going to be the data the proper birational morphism y to x such that y is normal and e is a prime divisor on y. So one thing to note about this setup is that e induces evaluation of the function field of x. So it's a map from the function field, uh, I guess the function field minus zero to z, slightly wrong. Um, and the way this is defined is you take a function on x and you pull it back to y, and you see how it vanishes along e. So there are two invariants that you can look at uh, for one of these, uh, what I'll call divisorial valuations or divisors over x. So the first is the log discrepancy, which shows up a lot in birational geometry for measuring singularities. So this is just going to be uh, the coefficient of e in the relative canonical divisor plus one. And the second is going to be the expected order of vanishing of uh, sections of minus kx along e. Um, so the way this is defined is it's one over the volume of x, and then you integrate this volume function. So this volume function looks a little bit weird, but one thing to note is that eventually this volume goes to zero because eventually you hit some pseudo effective threshold. So in fact, this is actually just going to be a finite number and it's somehow measuring how sections of minus kx vanish along e. So it's a theorem of Fujita and Lee that says that X is K semi-stable if and only if uh, the log discrepancy minus the expected order of vanishing is non-negative for all divisors E over X. Any questions? Okay. Um, so I want to talk about briefly how these two definitions are related. So it turns out you can kind of go back and forth between these two notions uh, in some cases. So a special test configuration, uh, map curly X of your Fano variety gives you a valuation of the function field of the Fano variety. Um, so this is just order of vanishing along the special fiber. But then you know that the function field of the variety is isomorphic to the function 
or of the test configuration is isomorphic to the function field of the variety uh, adjoin a uh, variable t, just because the test configuration is birational to x cross a1. So then you can restrict this to get evaluation of just the function field. And uh, this was observed by Buxan, Hisamoto, and Johnson. And if you look at this valuation, that's the restriction of ord uh, x naught, then this is just going to be of the form uh, some integer times the order of vanishing along some divisor over x. And this uh, test configuration satisfies that the Futaki invariant is just a scalar multiple of uh, <clears throat> these invariants a minus s that I looked at before. And then this other invariant, the minimum norm uh, defined in the work of Durbin, is simply a multiple of uh, this s invariant. So I won't define uh, uh, this minimum norm, but it's defined some way in terms of the weight, similar to the Futaki invariant. OK, so now that I've uh, defined case stability, uh, I want to talk about the moduli of case-stable Fano varieties. Um, so there's a theorem uh, just in the last uh, five to 10 years uh, that said that there exists a projective scheme parameterizing k polystable q Fano, or what? So uh, this should say parameterizing smoothable k polystable q Fano varieties of dimension n and volume v. So I want to mention that this theorem is quite surprising. Uh, so first, it says that you can get some nice moduli space parameterizing smoothable k pi stable final varieties. But the more surprising thing is that this moduli space is actually uh, proper in a projective scheme. Um, and uh, one thing that's surprising about this is the intuition uh, from uh, the KSB approach doesn't quite hold here because uh, we can compactify the moduli space of smooth k polystable Fano varieties with just normal varieties. So you only need irreducible varieties to get this compactification. So let me mention that in dimension two, this was done for uh, the Del Paso surfaces uh, where uh, there exists some moduli. Uh, so this was done by Mabuchi and Mukai uh, in one of the cases and Odaka, Spati, and Sun in the remaining cases. Uh, so I guess uh, Mabuchi and Mukai did it in the degree four case, and the uh, Odaka, Spati, Sun did it in the degree one through four cases uh, later. And in higher dimensions, such moduli spaces were constructed by Li Wang and Shu and Odaka using deep analytic results, uh, especially the results of CDS and PN, which says that uh, k poly stable is equivalent to existence of a Keller-Einstein metric, um, and also the smoothable version of these results, or these results for smoothable Fano varieties uh, done by, I guess, Li Wang Shu and uh, uh, Odaka, or, or Spati Sun Yao. Um, so let me just mention uh, two of the properties of this moduli space. So one is uh, the properness, which uh, essentially uh, heavily uses a uh, result of Donaldson's sum, which says that if you have a family of Kähler-Einstein Fano varieties over a punctured curve, then you can take the gromov hausdorff limit of uh, these, Fano, these Fano varieties that have Kähler-Einstein metrics uh, approaching the puncture, and the gromov hausdorff limit is actually algebraic and a Q Fano variety. Uh, so that essentially gives you the compactification. And then another uh, important result is the projectivity of these moduli spaces, which was recently settled uh, in the work of uh, Xu and, and Zhuang, uh, building on work of Kedoni and Pepit Falvi. And also there's related earlier work of Li Wang and Xu uh, using more analytic or more analytic tools. So I should mention that uh, this result here relies heavily on the differential geometry. And there's been recent work on trying to uh, prove such a statement algebraically and extend this result for all Q Fano varieties and not just smoothable Fano varieties. So let me talk about uh, some uh, an algebraic approach to uh, constructing K moduli of Fano varieties. 
So first what I want to do is I want to define some moduli stack of k semi stable q fano varieties of fixed dimension and volume. Uh, so this is going to be the, I guess, the pseudo functor that takes a scheme t uh, over the complex numbers and associates it with uh, flat projective morphisms x to t uh, such that the fibers are going to be k semi stable q fano varieties of dimension n and volume v. And then we also add some technical condition uh, that says that this family satisfies Kolar's uh, condition, uh, which says that if you look at the relative canonical bundle, then its reflexive powers are flat over T and commute with arbitrary base change. So this is quite is somewhat technical, um, but when the base T is normal, this just means that the relative canonical divisor is Q Cartier, which is a natural condition to have. Um, so one thing to note is if you're less familiar with the language of stacks, just note that uh, when t is a uh, spec of the point or a spec of the uh, complex numbers, uh, this is just giving us uh, k semi-stable q fano varieties of dimension n and volume v. <clears throat> so what we currently know now is that uh, this moduli stack is a finite type Arden stack, and it emits a separated good moduli space, which is uh, a notion due to Jared Alper, uh, and it's some algebraic space, uh, and it's going to parameterize k polystable q fano varieties of dimension n and volume v. So let me mention some of the ingredients that go into this uh, theorem. So first, one wants to prove a boundedness result uh, for this moduli functor. Uh, so this says that if you look at Fano varieties that are k-semi-stable with fixed dimension and volume, then uh, they can essentially be embedded in some uh, fixed projective space. Uh, <clears throat> so this was originally proved by Chen Jiang in 2017, and just this year, and his proof uh, heavily relies on uh, the work of Burkhar and Burkhar's boundedness result uh, when he proved BAB. So there's recently been a second proof of this, which is quite interesting, that uh, done by Chen, Chen Yang and Zituan, that avoids the BAB machinery and deduces the boundedness result from properties of the normalized volume function and some boundedness results of Haken, McKern, and Shu and Haken, Shu. So what this boundedness gives you is that uh, the set of k semi stable Fano varieties of fixed dimension and volume are essentially parameterized by some locus in some Hilbert scheme. So you want to know, uh, prove that that locus is algebraic in some sense. Um, so what you need is some result about how k semi stability behaves in families of Fano varieties. Um, so it was proved with Yu Chen Lu and Chen Yang Xu, and also independently by Chen Yang, that in a family of Q Fano varieties, uh, the locus of the base parameterizing the ones that are k semi stable is always going to be an open set. So what this means is that essentially this moduli stack is going to be uh, some locally closed subscheme of some union of Hilbert schemes, and then you can get the moduli stack by just uh, taking the stack theoretic quotient uh, by the PGL action. <clears throat> and the next, so this gives you that the moduli functor is an Arnhem stack. And then the next uh, statement is to construct the separated good moduli space, uh, which was done uh, in work with Jared Alper, Daniel Halpern Leisner, and Chen Yang Xu. And this uses uh, various results, including a separateness result with Chen Yang, um, and another result about uh, degenerations by uh, Li Wang and Xu, and also a condition for when Arden stack admits a good moduli space, uh, which is quite elegant, but also difficult to show is satisfied at times, uh, which is was done by Alper, Halpern, Leisner, and Heimlach. Um, so let me just say the ingredients that go into this. Um, so essentially, to construct this good moduli space, you want to show that the uh, the closed points in the stack correspond to uh, k polystable Fano varieties. Then you want to show that the automorphism group of one of these k poly polystable Fano varieties uh, is reductive, and then locally, a tau locally at one of these closed points, uh, the stack is going to look like some affine scheme modulo that reductive group, and the good moduli space is going to look at look like the affine GIT quotient of that 
quotient stack. So one thing that's missing is uh, the following statement, which is conjectured to be true that the moduli space should actually be a projective scheme. Currently, we only know that it's uh, some finite type algebraic space that's separated. So to prove that it's a projective scheme, there are essentially two things that one has to do. So the first is to show that the moduli functor of k-semi-stable Fano varieties satisfies the existence part of the valuative criterion for properness. So if you could prove a statement like this, this would imply that the moduli space is actually going to be proper. And the second thing you want to do is to show the moduli space is projective. So you want to show it emits some ample line bundle. Um, so to do this, or I guess it's expected that there's some this line bundle called the CM line bundle uh, on the moduli space is going to actually give you some polarization. So it's conjectured that the CM line bundle is ample on the basis of families of k polystable Fano varieties of maximal variation. Um, so this result was actually uh, proved uh, recently by Chen Yang and Zichuan building on work of Kedoni and Pavic Falvey, or building on their approach, um, assuming that k polystability is the same as this notion called reduced k polystability. So two is in some sense done if you can prove this uh, challenging technical result. Um, and one is the case is what I'll talk about today. So essentially, before I talk about how to prove one, uh, essentially the idea is we want to use uh, the approach of Langton uh, where you take a family of Fano varieties or a Fano variety over uh, the complement of a pointed curve, and you want to extend it to a family of k-semi-stable Fano varieties over the entire curve. Um, so the way to do this, uh, or one of the keys in Langton's argument, as I mentioned before, was to have some nice notion of an optimal destabilization of a Fano variety, and to show that this notion kind of behaves well in families. So one way to try to construct some destabilization is to look at this invariant called the stability threshold. Um, so this invariant uh, is going to be defined as the infimum over, I guess there's a typo, it should be the infimum over all exceptional divisors or all, over all divisors E over X, not infimum over X, of the log discrepancy over the expected order of vanishing. So note that X is k semi stable if and only if this a minus s is always non-negative, which is the same as saying this delta invariant is at least one. So this invariant was introduced by the work of Fujita and Odaka. Um, actually, they defined this in a different way, but and instead defined it using singularities of anti-canonical divisors. Um, and it was shown to coincide with the above definition in work, joint work with Johnson. Um, and as well, this is a very natural invariant to consider. So it turns out that this has some differential geometry uh, characterization. So the minimum of one in delta is going to be equal to the greatest Ritchie lower bound by the work of Buxon, Berman, and Johnson, and also independently by the work of Chelsov, Rubinstein, and Zang. Um, so this invariant tells you how close the Fano variety is to admitting a Keller Einstein metric, uh, roughly. So there's a conjecture about this invariant that says that this delta invariant, when it's less than or equal to one, is always going to be a minimum. So there's always going to be a divisor computing this invariant. So something to note about this is that the delta equal one case implies that case stability equals uh, some notion I didn't define called uniform case stability. Um, and this is very important for proving the, uh, the normal version of the yao tian donaldson conjecture uh, for uh, singular Fano varieties, uh, since there are results of uh, Li Tian Wang and Berm and Chi Li building on the approach of Buxon, Berman, and Johnson in the uniform, uh, showing that uh, Keller Einstein metric is the same as uniform case stability um, and some uh, G equivariant version of that. And another thing to note about this uh, stability threshold is that 
it doesn't quite give you a notion of an optimal, or I guess I called it the optimal destabilization conjecture, but it doesn't quite give you a notion of an optimal destabilization. So <clears throat> when X is not k semi stable, uh, you would want that the minimizer is always unique, and this is actually uh, not true in many examples. Uh, so one example is if you look at the Fufano variety P11M, when M is greater than two, um, so this is some projectifies cone over P1, then this is going to be an unstable Fano variety, and the minimizer is not going to be unique. Okay, so let me mention some results about this conjecture. So part, there are some partial results. So it follows from the work of Datar and, and Zekalidi, and also uh, Ross and Zekalidi, that when X is smooth, uh, this infimum is actually always a minimum. Um, and this kind of relies on uh, the techniques of gromov hausdorff limits, uh, which uh, in the smoothable case went to show was used to show that the moduli of Fano varieties is proper. Um, and one thing to note is while this conjecture is unknown, you can also look at not just uh, divisorial valuations, but you can look at more general types of valuations. So it turns out uh, there always exists a <clears throat> quasi-monomial valuation that computes this in FEMA. And uh, I think this was mentioned uh, yesterday and, or on Tuesday in Zichuan's talk uh, that there's some conjecture that whenever you have one of these quasi-monomial valuations computing this in femum, uh, this is the associated graded ring of the filtration induced by that valuation it is going to be finitely generated. And if that were known, then you'd actually get this conjecture by a recent preprint of Chen Yue. So <clears throat> the main theorem that I want to mention in this talk is that if the optimal destabilization conjecture holds, which says that the stability threshold is always a minimum, then we can actually show that this moduli space is proper. So the key to doing this is to develop a good notion of an optimal destabilizing test configuration. Um, so this was partially, or such notions uh, were uh, partially studied in the work uh, with Yu Chen Lu and Chu Yu Zhao. Um, so what, it was, what was shown in that work is that if you look at the infimum of the Fukaki invariant over the minimum norm, over all special test configurations, you're getting uh, just the delta invariant minus one. So this is a natural invariant to look at on the left-hand side to try to get an optimal destabilizing test configuration. Um, and in this work with uh, Yu Chen and Chu Yu, we showed that the minimizers of this invariant in the unstable case satisfy many nice properties. Um, for example, if you have some uh, test configuration minimizing this in femum, then uh, the test configuration or the delta invariant of the special fiber is the same as the de delta invariant of the final variety you started with. So the one issue with this looking at this minimizers of this infimum is that the minimizer is not always unique. So there's a way to kind of get around this issue. So the idea is you want to look at things that compute this infimum, and then you want some sort of tie breaking. So to do this, what we consider is some infimum of some bivalued function. So Harold, uh, yeah, Harold. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, could, could you specify what do you mean? What do you mean by non-unique? Non could, could you say a bit more? I mean, what do you mean by non-unique? Um. So I mean that the the test configurations are. So number one, uh, I think there should be examples where the special fibers aren't even isomorphic, uh, but the aren't all necessarily isomorphic. But in general, I just mean that. Oh, I see what you're saying. So. I so mean, you want up to even up to scaling, they're non unique. So, of course, if you take a test configuration and you scale it, it's still going to be a minimizer. But, but I mean that the central fiber, the, the central fiber, the same or not? So, I think there should be examples where the central fiber is not the same. Uh, maybe Yu Chen knows of such examples. Uh, but in general, I mean that. Uh, 
even up to scaling, the test configurations won't be isomorphic as test configurations. Okay, uh, are they related? Uh, yes, so I'll, uh, maybe I'll answer this question on the next slide. Uh, okay, thank you. But there's a, yeah. So yeah, so there's a result that we have that's similar to a result in one of uh, your papers. Um, so since this isn't unique, what we're going to do is we're going to config, consider this bivalued function on R2, where I'm endowing R2 with the lexicographic order. So I'm going to look at the infimum of the Futaki invariant over the minimum norm, comma the Futaki invariant over the L2 norm. So the, where the L2 norm is some other invariant that looks at the size of a, that measures the size of a test configuration is, and is in, defined in terms of the weights of the GM action on the special fiber. So one thing to note is that in the past, people have often considered the infimum of the Futaki invariant over the L2 norm uh, alone. And from our perspective, uh, it's not too useful for us because it's hard to understand that infimum using birational geometry. Um, and it's not clear to us that there should actually be a test configuration minimizing that invariant rather than just a maybe a sequence of test configurations or a filtration. Any further questions? OK. Um, so what we can prove is that if you have a Fano variety that's not k-semi-stable, then if you assume that the optimal uh, destabilizing, uh, destabilization conjecture holds, then there always uh, exists a test configuration computing the infimum. So it minimizes this bivalued invariant. Um, and any such uh, test configuration is always going to be unique up to scaling. So maybe I'll talk about uh, how to get the uniqueness uh, of such uh, a test configuration computing that infimum. So it's, there's a theorem uh, jointly with Yu Cheng Lu and, and uh, Chu Yu Zhou, um, which builds on earlier work of Lu Wang and Xu, which says that if you have uh, two test configurations that compute this infimum, or really just the, the infimum of Futaki over the minimum norm, then there always exists some uh, way to connect those two test configurations. So there exists some equivariant family over A2 uh, such that the first test configuration is isomorphic to the restriction of that family over A1 cross 1, and the second is uh, can be recovered by that family restricted to 1 cross A1. So you can think about this as saying that the test configurations, uh, I guess, live in, or, uh, live in some simplex in some uh, Keats building. And once you know that you can connect such to minimizers, then you can use the convexity properties of the L2 norm to easily deduce that the minimizer is always going to be unique. So I hope that answered uh, Shawe's question. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. So using uh, these optimal destabilizations, you can uh, look at this notion of a theta stratification of a moduli stack due to Halper and Leisner. So this notion, oh. yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. So can you ask one more? Uh, so yeah. what's about the set of delta, just delta minimizers? So essentially the set of delta minimizers, if you look at divisorial valuations, are just uh, exactly the same of, as test configurations minimizing the Futaki over the minimum norm. Um, yeah. So there's something to show in that. You need to show that a delta minimizer always gives you a special test configuration. Um, <clears throat> and this was done uh, with uh, Yu Chen and Chu Yu. Yeah, so my question is uh, if you have some structures of the set. Yeah, so essentially... Kind of vague question. Yeah, so essentially I think you should think about it as being some... Uh, I think you should essentially think about it as being some cone in the space of valuations, but that's a little bit imprecise. Um, and, or, yeah. So also I should note that there is some results of, uh, this is in a different direction, there are some interesting results of uh, Sichuan uh, that say that uh, 
if you look at the cell, uh, delta minimizers, then essentially in the interior of that set, the minimizers should all have the same center on X. Um, so there's some interesting results on that. Okay, thanks. Okay. So there's this notion uh, I was saying due to Daniel Halpern Leisner uh, that generalizes the harder Simhan stratification of the moduli of vector bundles on a curve to more general stacks. So what this notion is, is it says that if you look at the moduli stack of vector bundles, then there's some open semi-stable locus, and then its complement is unstable, but you can stratify the unstable locus by what the harder Nara Simhan uh, filtrations look like. And uh, the optimal destabilizations of uh, those unstable vector bundles kind of behave nicely uh, in that stratification. So using some of these notions, and essentially we have to prove properties of this invariant that we're looking at and how it behaves in families, uh, if we assume this conjecture, the optimal destabilization conjecture, there exists a theta stratification on the moduli of Q quantums. So I haven't defined what this notion is, but I'm essentially defining it, defining it in what I say right now. So what it means that there exists some cover of the moduli stack of Q quantums by open substacks. Um, so it's some infinite collection of open sets. Um, and the first is going to be the moduli stack of K semi-stable Fano varieties. And then I get this chain where uh, this stack, uh, substack uh, M greater than or equal to some MI parameterizes Q Fano varieties where this bivalued, uh, or where this infimum is greater than MI. And furthermore, for each I, there exists some unit, union of connected components of the mapping stack from A1 mod GM to uh, this uh, stack of parameterizing Q Fano's where the invariant is greater than MI, uh, such that the map from these connected components is a closed immersion and has image equal to exactly the set of Fano's uh, where that invariant equals MI. Um, so you can think about these, this set uh, inside the mapping stack as corresponding to the optimal destabilizations, but it's some stacky way of uh, representing them. And this condition says that they behave kind of nicely in families in a suitable sense. I'll hold for questions because I know this might have been a little confusing. Okay, so I'll take the extra five minutes that I lost at the beginning. So oh, now sorry. we can. Sorry, can I can I ask? Yeah. So about the set of this. So you have some set of threshold MI. Yeah. So it's uh, countable. Yeah, so exactly. So it's some subset of the of R2, and it's actually going to, or this is a little bit imprecise, uh, but it's essentially discrete away from uh, zero, uh, away from zero. Uh, yeah. So when you mean this M, M funnel, so you, you don't have any restriction. Yes, yeah, so when I say so M funnel, I mean... Highly unseparated. Yes, yeah, so when I say uh, M Fano, I mean the stack of, or really, I mean the moduli stack of Q Fano varieties, mm -hmm. where I don't assume K semi stable. Because the point is that the key to uh, using Langton's argument to prove the properness of the moduli space is that while you care about the moduli, while you care about the semi stable objects, it helps to consider the larger stack and to consider the unstable objects as well. OK, so uh, let me just get to the last slide. So now assuming this optimal destabilize, uh, destabilization conjecture, we can prove the properness of the moduli space of k polystable phonos. So uh, let's start with a DVR uh, r, and let k and little k be its fraction and residue field. So what we want to do is we want to start with uh, k semi-stable q fano over uh, spec of the fraction field. 
and we want to extend it to a family of k semi-stable fanos over a uh, speck of the DVR, possibly after some finite phase change. So essentially, uh, what you can do is you can always extend the Fano over a uh, speck of the fraction field to a family of polarized varieties over the DVR. Um, and essentially, this is, a, this is just the properness of the Hilbert scheme. Um, but then using an argument of Lee and Shu, you can run some semi-stable reduction and then, or you can use semi-stable reduction and run some MMP to get some finite extension of DVRs and the family of Q Fano's uh, X prime over the spec of the extension of the DVR, uh, extending the original Q Fano variety or the base change of it. And then the, but the key point is that the special fiber uh, is not uniquely determined by this and it might not be K semi-stable. And then using the work of Alper and Hal Hal Alper, Halpern, Leisner, and Heinloff, if you assume the existence of this theta stratification, you can uh, essentially modify the special fiber uh, and increase its stability. So you can think about just increasing the delta invariant of the special fiber. And essentially doing this uses the way you do these modifications is heavily reliant on the existence of this optimal destabilization of the special fiber. And eventually you repeat this process and you get some uh, uh, finite extension of DVRs again and a family of K semi-stable Q Fano varieties over a spec of this new DVR, <clears throat> extending the base change of the Fano variety. So this shows that the moduli functor of K semi-stable Fano varieties is going to be uh, satisfy the ex existence part of the value of criterion for properness, and you get the properness of the moduli space. So as the point is that this theorem says that uh, just understanding uh, the instability of uh, unstable Fano varieties will give you the properness of the moduli space. Okay, so I'll end the talk there. Uh, let me go to the next slide. Uh, so there should be a sign that says, thank you for listening, uh, but it's not popping up, so I'll end the talk now. Okay, so thank you very much, Harold. Thank you for the great talk. Uh, any question? Uh, so can I, can I ask a few questions? Yeah. So, um, so the first question is, um, so suppose you um, replace the L2 norm by other, like maybe LP norms. Um, I guess they also have the convexity properties that you have. Yes, yeah, so you're right that they have the convexity properties. Um, and it's un like it's, in some sense, it's un unclear if this minimizer, uh, when you minimize that, or Futaki over the L2 norm, it's unclear if that's really the natural one to look at. But what we can show is that this one behaves nicely or satisfies very many nice properties. Um, on the other hand, if you look at the LP norm, I, um, then it's not clear to me that you should actually get a minimizer of this function. So the point is that if you look at uh, a final variety with a torus action, uh, then you can look at uh, the L2 norm as you vary the one parameter subgroup of or in the torus. And this L2 norm is going to be a rational quadratic form um, and positive definite if uh, the uh, if the torus action is uh, effective, essentially. Um, <clears throat> so I don't think in general, if you look at the LP norm, it's not clear to me that you'll always get a rational minimizer of this function. I see. So um, so then a second question is, um, so suppose to take this, um, 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 this minimizer with the um, in this next, I mean, this unique minimizer that you found in the end, uh, can you show that the center is also minimal among all minimizers? I mean, like, center um, has minimal dimension. Uh, I think I would guess that sh should be true. I haven't checked it, but there, or, yeah, I would guess that that should be true, possibly also with some help from your theorem. Um, 
but yeah, I would need to think about that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, so for for Ambro has a question in the chat, uh, which says, "Why the minimizer being un unique is important?" Um. So it says it essentially comes into this process of Alper, Halpern, Meissner, and Heinroth that builds on Langton's argument. Um, uh, so essentially, the having this. I, or I guess one way to think about it is that you want you want a minimizer. So if the minimizer wasn't unique, you could just choose one of the nine unique minimizers. But my impression is that is or one reason that wouldn't really work for this argument is you want these minimizers to kind of behave nicely in families. So you want something somewhat canonical. Um, so that's the intuitive answer I have for you. Uh, sorry, so I have a question. So, how about if it's fine? What if there are finitely many of these uh, minimizers? Let's say. Um, then, uh, would it? So that's a that's a good question. Um, so I think it turns out that uh, there can't be finitely many minimizers, uh, other than just one minimizer. And the reason is that if you have two minimizers, then you can do this process I very briefly talked about: how you can connect these two test configurations with what you can think about as being an array in the space of test configuration. So you get a whole array of minimizers, or a line segment of minimizers in some sense. But it's not a priori obvious, I would say. OK, thank you. So then, do, 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 do you want me to ask her a question? I mean, I don't get. No, I, I was writing an email, and for some reason, Zoom took over, so it was uh, not. Okay, 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 okay. So I'll just skip that. So yeah, so maybe I, sh oh, I should okay. mention that uh, I guess hopefully this should be on the archive uh, sometime in the, this month. Um, yeah, but it's not currently posted. So, uh, Ke Wei Zhang ask a question: Does the properness without holding the Log of other case. Yes, yeah, so I should mention that, or I should mention that everything in this, uh, or all of these theorems were uh, in our paper are, been, are stated in the log of other case. Um, so really, one would want to prove the optimal destabilization conjecture in that case. And I have one more question. So uh, for projectivity, what is left to be done then in this? Um, yeah, so I should. So I mentioned that uh, if you knew that the modulized space was proper, then uh, there's this result uh, of uh, Zichuan and Chen Yang that says that uh, that the locus uh, or that the that if uh, uniform or sorry if reduced uh, case stability equals k poly stability, uh, then you get the uh, the Ampleness of the CM line bundle. So it turns out that this conjecture that reduced k stability is the same as uh, k poly stability uh, would essentially follow from some torus equivariant version of this optimal destabilization conjecture. Um, so you need to show that the whenever delta equals one, it's a uh, this infimum is a minimum, and you'd also need to show that uh, some torus equivariant version as discussed in the work of uh, Chen Yang and Zichuan also holds. So essentially, uh, the conjectures about the moduli space are uh, now reduced to proving this statement about the delta invariant. I see. Thank you. Uh, so there's a question by uh, Zacharias. Uh, yeah, so I can see it. Um, sure, yeah. So, I think, so I didn't mention this too much, but uh, so a lot of the results here uh, use the valuative criterion uh, for case stability, uh, which is only for fun varieties, um, and maybe probably shouldn't hold in general, um, and also uses a lot of techniques from birational geometry, especially various voluminous results. Um, so these techniques are very special to fun varieties. Um, so this doesn't really say much about what should happen in the CSCK case. Um, and as maybe experts in the room know, there, there is a lot of literature 
on test configurations minimizing futaki of the L2 norm in that case. Okay, so any further question? Can I ask? Hi. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So the for the last slide, so this uh, third part. So I am not familiar with the theta stratification this stuff yet, but uh, am I right to understand that the, so you have this uh, stratification by m of x? Yeah. In some well, in some nice way, and uh, which, which is some well discrete or well, parameterized by discrete theta. So yeah, it's essentially discrete away from zero. Okay. Okay. And uh, you use some structure of the stratification so that you can like uh, replace the limit inside like narrower strata, deeper strata. So you, you increase the of x. Yeah, so that's the essential idea. You you have some stratification and uh, you know that the so you have some, from two, you have some family where the central fiber might not be k semi-stable, uh, but the general generic or generic fiber is k semi-stable. So the, essentially that family doesn't live in one strata. So you want to uh, essentially modify the special fiber. Uh, so you increase which strata it, <clears throat> it lives in. Um, and essentially the, if you look at the, paper of Alper, Halper, and Weissner, and Heinloch, the idea is you can somehow is, I guess, a tau locally, or is locally you can um, approximate these stratas by uh, quotient stacks of the form and affine scheme mod GM, where the GM action is giving you the canonical optimal destabilization, and you somehow use the, a very co concrete computation of the geometry of one of these stacks of the a form affine scheme mod GM to kind of modify the map. And you only have finite steps for it. Yeah, so I, yeah. So the point is you, there are only finitely many steps you have to do. So maybe another question is, I, I thought you mentioned there's a partial result for this optimal this delta of the neural what was the name? Well, optimal destabilizing conjecture. Yeah. Right. So does it help to get some partial results for the proof of this at this moment? Um, so I don't think, so I think the point that you have a valuation, a quasi-monomial valuation computing the minimum doesn't really help you. But the point is, uh, we would hope one day that you can use the existence of this quasi-monomial valuation computing the infimum to actually show that near that quasi-monomial valuation, there's a divisorial valuation. Um, and what you need to do is, or one way to do this is uh, to actually show that the filtration induced by that quasi-monomial valuation uh, of the, the relative of the section ring uh, is finitely generated. So if you could prove that statement, then you'd get that there's a divisorial minimizer near that point. Um, so I would say that there's this partial result of, uh, that follows from work of Datar Zekalidi and Ross Zekalidi. Um, and I guess if you knew that result for smoothable Fano varieties, then I guess you could prove properness using this, this technique. Um, but on the other hand, the techniques of Datar and Zekalidi are rely on these gromov hausdorff limits. So it would be a little bit silly to prove properness of the moduli space using, or it'd be roundabout to use properness of the module to prove properness using their results. And perhaps uh, you can re still reconstruct the uh, open part, but parameterizing smooth stuff. Smooth stuff. Yeah. So you yes. uh -huh. So I think if you, right. I would need to check, but I, I think if you knew this for uh, smoothable final varieties, then you get a new proof of the properness of the moduli space for, for that you and Li Wang and Xu worked on. Thanks.
So I have uh, one more question. Uh, let's say you can choose, you can find this minimum for this uh, delta invariant. And then yeah. if X is not uh, K stable or polystable, is there a way to chop off your final variety until you get a stable one? Yes, yeah, like so... Like an MMP, some kind of MMP, you know? So... Yeah, so I, to be honest, I don't really know how to do an MMP. So I guess I was mentioning that <clears throat> uh, this step two in the process uh, relies on MMP, but when you run this MMP, the special fiber that you're choosing is highly non-unique. Mm. Uh, so it, there isn't... Uh, yeah, there are a lot of choice, or there's a significant choice that goes into this step too. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so, or I guess one thing to note is I'm not saying that any unstable guy, un unstable Fano corresponds to a stable Fano. Uh, the point is that if you have a family of Fano's over a punctured curve, uh, where this generic fiber is K-semi-stable, uh, mm. then you can modify the special fiber to make it more stable. But if you don't know that your generic fiber is unstable, then this is not going to be true. Or so, sorry, if the generic fiber is unstable, this is not going to be true because case semi-stability is an open condition. Uh, so this method only works if the general fiber is semi-stable? Yeah, so you really need, or, yeah, so I'm not going into details, but that really goes into uh, part three. If you have constant scalar curvature, if you want to impose constant, constant scalar curvature on a polarization, then basically you have to chop off your variety somehow, right? Something like this. And the idea is that the op, this optim, this minimizer should help you to degenerate, I mean, to chop it off until you get one, right? No? Or am I mistaken? Florian, what does chop? What do you mean by chop? I mean, uh, uh, make it smaller. Make it smaller. They, this, what if, this what if it's already ring? small? Like, make what if it's minimum? Ring smaller, I mean. So maybe your intuition is coming from the case of, uh, of vector bundles. How, if you look at the harder nara simhan filtration and then you look at the associated uh, graded components, mm -hmm. then those are going to be semi-stable. So I don't think that, is that kind of where you're coming from? Or not really? Uh, no, I, I, I think there are some papers of Donaldson which say that if uh, uh, if uh, if a polarization does not admit does not admit a constant scalar curvature, you somehow cut. For example, in the toric case, you have a you have a moment polytope, and then uh, Donaldson, if I understand correctly, says that you should uh, cut off that uh, polytope until you finally arrive at a uh, at one which uh, has constant scalar curvature. Maybe is this correct? Um, or, yeah, so I don't, I think I've heard people talk about this, but I'm not sure how it's related to this approach. Um, uh -huh. Someone else is welcome to answer if they have a, there are probably people that know here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess if there's no more question, let's thank her again. Thank you. So. Uh, maybe we will next next week. Thank you very much for everyone to come. Thank you, Thank you Harold. Great talk. Okay, I finish the session. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 sorry about the mistake at the beginning about the technical technical issue. See you next week. Yeah. See you next week.